So I'm sitting here with Jeff, and he's asking, what is the end goal? Yeah. Why are we... Oh, and you asked this to someone who runs the Montessori school? Yeah, it's on, school. The, it's on the Montessori Board of Education for the United States. For the oh, United States. I mean, talk, talk about someone who has actual impact. She's able to set policy for dozens, perhaps hundreds, that guides hundreds of schools in their activities. And I ask the same question, but what, like, what's the end purpose of all these things? Why, why and should I say school no be? more boring classes. Why? I didn't learn when things were boring. All right, so that's, so that's the idea, that boring classes mean you don't learn. I sure didn't. I would have gone anywhere else. Okay, let's see. How did I learn? Um, I learned despite the boredom. Right. The, the times that I really learned was when the teacher said, um, cow's eyes are remarkable. You can throw them in the air and then catch them with your teeth as they come down. Ew, Mr. Holbrook, what are you saying? I said, well, you know, that's... And, and by the way, the homework's over there. And so as I was saying about the, the cow's eyes, you can get them in different sizes, you know. And so I remember where the homework was because of all this was going on. Holbrook, he, I, I called him half dream, but nobody picked up on it. <laughs> Holbrook had this whole idea that, um, I, I don't know if it was conscious, he just wanted to have fun in class. Mm -hmm. Every day was different. You wanted to show up. You didn't. He didn't have truancy because people wanted to see what crazy thing he would come in. He'd have costumes. He would. Um, when we're doing algebra, I mean, this is eighth grade algebra. If you can, it's the accelerated program. You get through algebra. That means you're doing geometry in ninth grade. They wanted you to do trig pre-calc. You're going to be calculus. And, I mean, it's this marching campaign. Mm -hmm. And I was part of the march. And imagine if they had said, well, you've done enough. Why don't you spend the time studying another language? Or how about studying some ethics? Mm. Okay, well, this is my point, though. What is the purpose of education? I like that. Lipke's definition. I have to reread it to get the sense of it, but it's basically so that when you meet the person five years from now, ten years from now, as they're walking out the door at all points, you, you're preparing for that moment when you see them again, and they, they're happy with their lives. They've picked up things, not necessarily at your school, but along the way because they got curious. We didn't remove curiosity from them. We encourage them to pursue their passions and look at what the person, maybe they turn into a parent, maybe they become a teen mother, but they do it with a way that they, they make it a choice. It's whatever they do, they turn it into a choice. So it's happiness. I'd say purpose. purpose. It's like purpose. It might not be happy, but... <laughs> <laughs> they know it's their choice where they got there. And so it's it's more 25% of it is academics. The rest of it, the whole purpose is to have them discover that they are the captains of their ships. Okay, but okay, okay, I admit that. Okay, good. I like that. However, but that's not what I'm 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 a math teacher. No, but Okay, but to be a, to sail a ship, mm -hmm. it's one thing to stand on the poop deck, just like the word poop deck, right. it's, it's one thing to stand on this poop deck, it's another thing to actually make the ship go in the direction that you want it to go. Oh, that's true, it could just be a raft, and all you're doing is just holding on while it's blowing around in the breeze. That's very much Taoism. <laughs> which I kind of tend to believe but right. I guess I, like what are we preparing what are we what are we trying to get students to be or what are we trying to teach them they often say that we're 
we're teaching them for jobs of today when we should be teaching them for opportunities for tomorrow. Okay, but what's... Okay. So I try to teach them about the people who are asking the right questions, which means people like um, well, Howard, he's always doing good, who's always saying, you know, there's multiple intelligences. And Pink... Virtually anything that Pink comes up with, at least, is pointing to the direction. I want every one of my students to have their own business if they want it. Good. This is what I. <clears throat> this is what I like. This is what I. I like. Skills, which is what your point is. You want to be able to leave school with a skill. You can go the next day and start earning some money. Not like me. I came out and I. I, I couldn't even figure out how to run a tutoring business because I hadn't even figured out that I had a skill. But what, like, like, timeliness, etiquette, completion of task. Deference to elders. Yeah. A concept of the <clears throat> client. Like someone de deserves a little attention and you'll get something back for that. Isn't, yeah. Isn't kind of like the knowledge base just kind of the framework within around with which we like learn all these skills. Mm -hmm. And yet we're being. And there was one good thing that I've heard about the FCAT. There's going to be a speaking FCAT. So they'll actually measure. Can you speak clearly? I, I think it'll be a spontaneous thing. Like they'll give you something. You have to speak for half a minute on a topic. This is like the. Um, of course, there will be people who will prep people for it, but everyone should have an elevator speech. You don't know if you're going to be stuck in the elevator for 20 seconds with Oprah Winfrey. What are you going to say? Yeah, or just with a hot girl.